Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Specifically, today's video is going to be a very highly requested video, a tutorial on how to use the new Brick Store. Now, Brick Store is very similar to what Brick Stock was. Um, in fact, it's created by the same guy who created Brick Stock. And if you don't know what Brick Stock is, it's essentially a spreadsheet based program that you can uh, modify and edit inventory in before you upload it to Bricklink or update on Bricklink. And there will be many videos, or maybe not many, but a few videos in this series on showing you how to use it. This will be the most basic one, shows you how to download it. And then we'll get into some basic things like adding parts to a new document, uploading to Bricklink as well as updating your prices um, or your inventory status on BrickLink as well. So first of all, go ahead and click the link in the description, which should bring you to here, which is GitHub. Now GitHub's where you're going to download the Brick Store file right now or the Brick Store download or uh, installer. Um, so once you get here, your version might be different. Um, whatever is the latest version at the time is what you'll probably want to use. You're going to scroll down underneath these assets option, and this is where you'll actually select uh, what you know operating system you have. So if you have a Mac, you can click the Mac. Linux, click Linux. Windows, click Windows. And you'll click whichever one, and then it'll download an installer. And you'll simply run that, and then you will have the program installed. Now I'm going to do that real quick, and then we're going to open up the program together, and we'll go through the setup, and then the actual um, adding pieces to a new spreadsheet. So now that you have the program downloaded and installed or dragged over to your application folder, you can actually open it up and it should look something like this. Now at the very beginning, you might get a pop-up and that pop-up might just say uh, you're not on the latest version of Brick Store. And then if you want to update it um, from that page, you can. If not, I believe you could just click close. Um, but it's probably best to keep it up to date as it is currently still in development. So there might be bugs and stuff in older versions. But this is what you're going to see essentially right when you uh, open the page or open the application. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our settings. So I'm on a Mac and I specifically know if I go up here to Brick Store and I click on it, I can then click Preferences and this will open up my Preferences or my Settings page. If you're on Windows, I'm not entirely sure how to get there, but I assume it's some similar way where you'll get to this Settings page here. So you can see we're going to start on the general tab. I'll kind of go through this language. You can change or pick from the three languages currently. The weights, you can do imperial or metric, depending which you prefer. And then currency, this is a big one. You're going to want to make sure the currency is obviously whatever you are selling in. So if you're not located in the U.S., you're going to want to select your currency. Now, parting out items, we're going to keep it as ask the user, but we're going to get into this later, probably in another episode um, or another video on this to see how exactly it is that we'll part out a set where we only have one or two copies. But we're going to keep it as ask the user for now, um, and I'll show you that later. Now, on we'll leave this stuff as is. Um, do, this one might be interesting, though. Document directory. Documents um, is where the default folder is selected. You can actually select another folder, and that's just the default place that it'll save a file. Um, for me, I don't use my documents folder, so if it gets saved to the documents folder, I never think to look there if I've lost it. But obviously, when you're saving a file, you can select the location for that specific file. Next, we're going to go to the interface tab. Now, this one is just what it looks like on the screen. We can go small or big if you want to click the icon size, but you can also adjust the font size or the icon size or the image size specifically um, as the preview shows down here. Next, we're going to click updates. This is something I like to change. This is usually, I believe, set to seven days. I believe this is usually set to 14 days, um, but I personally like to set the BrickLink database if older than three days. That just means if there's any changes to um, you know, an item or anything, it's going to update every three days. So every third day I open this software, it's going to update as opposed to every seven days. Might not be a big problem if it's every seven days. BrickLink pictures, I don't really worry about, so I leave it at, at 180 days. And then the BrickLink price, guys, for me, I like it at one day. Usually you can see it's 14 days, but... I personally like to update it every day um, just because I feel like, you know, that would keep the price more consistent. Um, if if it's 13 days out and, for example, the price is different than it is today, uh, I, I kind of want to know. So I, I changed that, but you can keep this whatever you would like. Now, this is probably the most important tab here, the BrickLink tab. This is where you're going to sign into your BrickLink uh, login, your BrickLink account. So your username you want to put here, and then your password you're going to want to put at the bottom. Now, it's extremely important that your username, uh, keep in mind it is cap sensitive, so you want to type that in correctly, as well as the password. Now, as far as I know, it does not give you an error here if this is incorrect. So you want to make sure you type it in right or the software uh, or part of the software will not work. The software itself should do the do fine, but when you go to import 
uh, or export to your inventory, that will not work. Um, we're not going to go over LDRAW or keyboard, but if you want to look at those, you can. But this is by far the most important one, the BrickLink tab. Make sure your login credentials are correct. So click OK, and then you're done here with the settings. And now that we're back in the software, we're going to want to uh, add or create a new spreadsheet. So like I said, this is essentially a spreadsheet software where you can create inventory and put inventory on the page before you uh, want to upload it to your inventory. So the first thing up here is this little plus with the paper behind it. If you click that, it'll create a new spreadsheet or a new document. So you can see now back here, there's nothing on this sheet, but you can kind of see it looks like a spreadsheet. It looks like we're going to have some columns and probably some rows as well. So that is that. Now, if you want to open an old file, you can click the second button here, a file that you have saved. If you want to save a file, which I would recommend always saving, is this little floppy disk icon here. And then, of course, you have a lot more options here, which we'll get to in just a moment. The first of which we're going to click this green plus, and this is how we're going to add some pieces to the inventory. So there's a variety of way to add parts to this, uh, not the inventory, sorry, to this spreadsheet. But I'm going to show you just by adding a default piece right now. So once you click that, you're going to see this window pops up here. And in this case, um, or specifically, if you're adding pieces one by one or individually, let's say you're going through used pieces, this is going to be your main window here. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the item type. And there's a few item types. There's book, catalog, gear, instruction, minifig, original box, part, and set. Now, for this example, we're going to look for a certain piece. But if you were looking for a minifig, you want to make sure you're in the minifig category. Because if you're looking for R2-D2 in parts, you're only going to find pieces of R2-D2. You're not going to find the completed minifig for R2. So make sure that you are in the minifig category. If you're in there, uh, you know all, all the categories. If it's a set, you're going to want to type the set number in the set thing because it's not going to come up as a part. But we're just going to look for... Uh, let's just look for a, a one by 2 brick here. So you can type in either the set number or you can search, or sorry, the part number, so 3004 is a one by two brick. But if you wanna type in like one by two, you can do that as well. Now, the thing here is over here on this category, we're selected on all items. So we can scroll and scroll and scroll through here. Anything that says one by two in the description of it is going to be here. So you can see, we're just gonna scroll and scroll forever. I mean, I could literally scroll all the way to the bottom. So what we want to do is make this a little bit easier for ourselves. So if we're if we know we're going to be looking for bricks, we can go over here and we can select the brick category. So now we selected bricks one by two. Now you can see it only is showing the bricks and I can scroll to the bottom quite easily. There are a lot less bricks than there are for every single category. So we can select here, we can do whatever we need two by four. I don't know why two by four is popping up when I search one by two very interesting but here we are here's the one by two brick we were looking for again if you know the part number that is the easiest way all you do is type in the part number and then it'll pop up at the top and in that case you can be selected on all items and then it'll pop up now what we're going to do let's we actually want to add this to the inventory so let's say for example we have three um, of these bricks and they are in a dark bluish gray color First of all, we're selected on the brick. So if we select over here, you can see the colors change, but we're selected on this. And that's because known colors is the option selected here. So known colors means colors that this piece comes in that is known on BrickLink. Now, occasionally, I've found that there is a color missing here that is on BrickLink and I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, you could click, click all colors if you want, but then we have a ton of colors to scroll through and you could select one that maybe is not correct. Maybe that brick does not come in that piece. So we're going to keep it on known colors for now. Let's say, for example, I think we said we had dark bluish gray. We're going to click on dark bluish gray brick here. You can see the picture updates to the dark bluish gray color. Um, but now that we're selecting dark bluish gray, you can go down here to this little, uh, where all these little things are. First, we're gonna change the quantity. So like I said, we had three. We're gonna pretend we have three. We got three of these now. Now over here, you can see we have a few options here. It's gonna show you all the sets that it comes in, which is very nice. It is also gonna show you the six month sales average um, and the current inventory average for this specific piece in that specific color. If I change the color, you can see all those numbers change down there. But for dark bluish gray, you can see for new, uh, there's a lot of them. There are 446,000 pieces. Average is nine cents, quantity average eight cents, maximum one dollar, etc. All those things there you can see for used. Um, let's just pretend we're adding used, so we'll go with eight cents for price. Now you don't need to type the price in here, and for this for this example I'm going to, but after this I'm going to show you a way that we can not type it in. So actually, 
let's say I made a mistake, and instead of eight cents, I made it eight dollars. So we're gonna type in eight for now. Not a big deal, we'll fix that in a minute. Bulk, obviously we're gonna leave for one, but if you wanted to, you could go up to three. That means they have to purchase three in order to uh, purchase any. Um, cost, how much did it cost you for this piece? You can put that in as well. Tiered pricing, if you want the tiered pricing, you have the option to do that there as well. And you can do that based on percent or based on dollars down there, which is very nice. Now, this is an important thing that saves. Um, so condition, new or used. Like I said, we're gonna pretend that this is used. Now there is this complete option here. That is if you're adding a set. If you click that down, you can say incomplete, incomplete complete, or um, I don't remember what the other options. I believe there's three options though, but that's only if you're inputting a set. You're not gonna do that for um, a piece. Now you can put the remarks uh, or your comments in here. So let's say these are in not good condition. We can always say bad condition. So we'll pretend those are in bad condition, which I spelled wrong. I think, nope, maybe that's right, I don't know, who cares? <laughs> uh, comments, let's say it's in terrible condition. Now what we're gonna do is click this add button. So I'm gonna click add. Now, real quick, you can see behind the screen, it has added to our, uh, to our page. Now what I want to do, let's say we have five more bricks, we're gonna put five there in good condition. Good condition. There's this little consolidate checkbox here. Now consolidate, if I click add right now, you can see it did not consolidate. They are two separate lots here. Now the reason I might want them to be two separate lots is because one's in bad condition, one's in good condition. But let's go back here. Let's add three more and we're gonna click consolidate. And these are also, let's say in good condition. Now when I click add, you can see that instead of adding a new line back here, it added three more to this quantity five here. So now we have quantity eight in good condition here. So that's how you can add some pieces there. And if you want to, you can consolidate. Now, if you see here, when I click close on this window and then I click the plus again, it opens to the same exact settings. Now that's personally why I don't like putting in a price. And I, in fact, just leave my price at zero. And the only thing I have to change here then is the quantity. And if I want to, the comments, and then of course the condition of the item. Um, not quality, quantity. Um, and then I usually do not consolidate. I can consolidate at the end if I want as well. But essentially, quantity three, um, or whatever the quantity is of a piece, I don't add a price, and then I usually don't add comments, and I do not personally add remarks in this moment. And then of course you see this page here. So this is where we're at. Now one more thing, if you didn't consolidate, what you can do is you can select all by doing Control A or Command A, right click, and then click uh, Consolidate Items down here. And then you'll have this window pop up and it's off the recorder. Let me pull it on real quick. And you can say merge cost field, whatever. Um, and then it just essentially says, do you want to consolidate these two lots? And you can click yes. Now in this condition, or in this case, you can see the comments uh, combined each other and it says bad condition, good condition. doesn't really make sense. So we'll say bad condition. Um, you don't need to have a comment. That's totally up to you. That's just the same as the comment section on BrickLink itself. So now you can see the price here is $8. So the total for 11 of these bricks is $88. And obviously that's incorrect. These are never gonna sell at that price. So what we wanna do is set this to the six month sales average. Now this is why it's so simple and so nice to use this program because you can set all of your inventory to the six month sales average without having to go on BrickLink itself. So that's what this little icon up here. It has a money sign, it has a little BrickLink logo in front of it. So by clicking that, we can actually set it to the six month sales average, current inventory average, quantity average, all of these different options here. But personally, we're gonna use the last six month sales average right here. Now, advanced options, the only one here is download even if already in the cache. Now this specifically is, uh, like I said, we're gonna download every day this, the, uh, the prices from BrickLink. Now, if you only download once a week, you may occasionally want to check this box. It's totally up to you though. And then by clicking okay, it's going to go through and it says, Prices of select items have been updated. Now, what you'll have to do is you wanna make sure you select all the items if you have multiple lines here. But you can see now we're at 88 cents instead of $88, and that's because the six month sales average for this piece in the used quantity or used condition is eight cents. Now let's say we accidentally put this in here and it's used, but it's actually new in our hands and we wanna put it, sell it as new. Well, all you have to do is double click that U, and you can switch it to N double click it again, you can switch it back to use. So you don't actually have to change anything like crazy. Now you can adjust everything here by double clicking any of these fields. If you want to type in the price or anything there, you can even change the color. So let's say maybe you selected the wrong color. 
you can select it as green now. The key here is remember the price for a green brick. You're going to want to update one more time because the price of a green brick is probably different. Yep, definitely different than a light bluish gray brick. But you can select, or dark bluish gray, you can select all your options and stuff from here very nicely. You can even change the piece if you want. So if you selected the wrong piece, you can double click the image and change what piece it is. Now, something else, of course, is the remarks field. Now, I said I don't personally like putting the remarks field in on this ad inventory screen. And that is specifically because if I put in a remark right here and I type a D002, you can see we added this piece in D002. Now, if I add another piece and I select this one, it's already filled in. So I worry that I could potentially accidentally put this one in a remark or a drawer that it's not actually in, which would not be ideal. So we can delete these pieces, but I like to put my remarks field in after the fact. So in this case, we can type in our remarks and there you go. Now we have a remark. If there was another line below this, you can type in that remark and you can continue all the way down uh, until you are done. Now, what do we want to do once we have all of our pieces in here? Well, that's where we're going to upload it to BrickLink. So for me, at least on a Mac, and I assume it's the exact same on Windows, we're going to go up here to where it says File, and then you're going to go to Export. Now what you want to do is go over to BrickLink Mass Upload. Now there is a Mass Update. In this case, you don't want to use the Update. You want to use the Upload option. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to create an XML and copy it to your clipboard. And then after you're logged in, you'll get to this page here. So now we're going to, like I said, upload these items. So because we selected upload in brick stock, again, file, export, upload. Once we're on the upload page, we're going to go here and paste that XML. So control V or command V. And you can see in this case, it's a very short XML because that's just simply the one item that we added to our inventory. Now we're going to click this verify file right here in the middle of the page. We're not gonna go down here and click verify file. There's nothing in there, this is a separate section. Click this verify file here. Now by clicking that, it's gonna bring you to this verify page. You can see this is what we're looking to upload. So we have this, we have these uh, used dark bluish gray one by two bricks, bad condition. Remark field is filled in. You can see the quantity there and the price each. Now, if you click upload, it'll actually add the pieces to your inventory, I believe, and then you are done. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't actually have these pieces in my hand right now, but you understand the point. By clicking upload, you then add them to your inventory. Now, if you need to consolidate this, there will be that little orange thing here that says consolidated with lot, and then it'll say the old remark, and it'll say new quantity and all that kind of stuff there. So very basic there. Now I think this video is getting a little bit long, but I want to show you guys one more thing that you can do if uh, if you want to get some pieces here. Something you're else something else you're able to do is once again go to File. This time instead of you're adding your own pieces here, you're going to go to File Import, and you can see there's a few different options here. Um, in fact, there's a lot of options here. Bricklink Set Inventory. So if we click on that, we can actually find a set, and we can click on you know. Uh, let's go to Star Wars. We found this Naboo Starfighter. We're going to import that set. And now you can see we have all the pieces of that set. Very cool. We'll get further into this in another episode. We can also go to File, Import, Brick Link XML. So this is if we exported an XML from Brick Link and we want to paste it into here. I don't have one on my clipboard at the moment, but we could do that. Brick Link Order, if you click on this, if you're a seller, you can see you obviously have options here. You can select whoever or whatever order you want. Click import and it'll import the entire order into a brand new sheet as well. So if you want to pick an order this way, you can do that. Go to file, import, BrickLink store inventory. This one's very nice. You can download your entire inventory here. So our entire inventory is all on this brick stock file now or brick store file now. Very nice. Very simple to update your pieces or your prices, which we'll get into in the next episode as well. One more thing, file import BrickLink shopping cart. So I doubt I have one. Yeah, I don't have, oh, I do have some at the moment, actually. We can download a BrickLink shopping cart. So we can import this uh, shopping cart that we currently have as well. So if you want to combine shopping carts, you can do that too. Um, you know, lots of different options here that you can do um, by importing things through the file. Oh, you can also uh, import um, studio models. Um, so you can actually export or import I don't have a I can't select it here but you could select it where exactly you want to um, you know download or import your thing um, let's say you were creating sorry let me explain this let's say you're creating a file in studio 
you can actually import that and it'll give you all your piece lists and stuff here. So very nice here. This is uh, apparently a store cart that I created. I'm not entirely sure. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, that is going to be the first episode of Brick Store. This is just really basic how you're going to add some pieces to a sheet and how you can upload them to your inventory. This is very useful for using uh, or for adding used pieces to your store. Um, you know, just add a couple pieces that you need in whatever color, whatever quantity. Um, and then at the end of the day, you can go uh, and select them all update them to the six month sales average. And then obviously you can actually upload them to your inventory as well. So hopefully this was helpful. This is again, just the first of a few videos that'll come out. Uh, next episode, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into updating your inventory prices or quantity or anything like that um, with what is currently already on BrickLink. So updating stuff as opposed to uploading new things. And we'll also take a little bit of a dive into uh, sets and how we can part out a set on here. Um, and then uh, some other things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, more videos to come like this. Uh, thank you f uh, again for watching. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button, subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to everyone who has a question that hopefully I'm able to answer. Uh, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video.